Welcome to the Western Pacific Fishery Management Council's Fish Forever podcast about sustainable fishing through effective stewardship in the U.S. Pacific Islands. In this episode, we learn how scientists use fish ear bones or otoliths to determine the age, size, and growth rates of fish. How old is the fish you catch or eat? How old was it when it started to reproduce? Otoliths can tell us what age a fish was when it was old enough to reproduce and just how long it could be expected to live. Bob Humphreys is a researcher with the NOAA Fishery Service's Fish Life History Program. This is an, an otolith from a um, uku, about a half meter size uku. And you can see that they're fairly small but they're not that small because the uh, otoliths from billfish are extremely small. And this makes it very difficult to age billfish with otoliths. The function of the otoliths in fish are very similar to the function of the bones in the inner ear of mammals. They help with balance, orientation, and sound detection. The amount of ions laid down varies over time. But generally speaking, thin layers are laid down each year and under a microscope, they look like the rings in a tree trunk. In smaller fish, otoliths can also be counted by day rings to determine how short their lives were. When age information is correlated with fish size, otoliths also supply growth data for selected bottom fish and pelagic species, as well as other life history clues. The Pacific Islands Fishery Science Center is now beginning to work on commercially important coral reef species in Hawaii, and also in the areas of American Samoa, Guam and the Mariana Islands north of Guam. Coral reef fisheries are of particular importance, and many of these species haven't yet been studied. Information obtained by sampling otoliths from these reef fisheries will help assess the status of these fisheries and current management practices. So where do we find these otoliths, and how are these tiny bones extracted? As it turns out, otoliths aren't that hard to find, but they're tricky to retrieve. What we've done here is done a what we call a pop top um, section where we've cut and exposed the lower part of the brain. The brain is actually right in here and in the very corners it's hard to see it but in the very corners back in here at the base of the brain on the bottom is where the otoliths sit and they sit in little tight enclosures. So when we actually take the otoliths out we have to use tools like bone cutters to make sure that we clip it out of that bony enclosure so that we don't break the otoliths as we remove it. So there's some skill involved in removing these. Um, most people when they first start doing removing the otoliths in the lab tend to break. But with a little bit of practice um, and some help with magnifying glasses, um, you can get pretty good at taking these out without breaking them. So what role can the average person play in helping us secure information about the age and growth of fish? In Hawaii, the Pacific Islands Fishery Science Center needs help getting the smallest and largest sized specimens of commercially valuable bottom fish species. Since scientists are lousy fishermen, we, we depend on um, the fishing community to be able to get samples for us, particularly for difficult samples like these very young bottom fish here. And what we have here on the top is a, is a juvenile apakapaka, a juvenile ehu, and a juvenile size uku. We suspect that these are maybe a year old or, or, or perhaps um, even less than a year old. If we can get these samples from fishermen and they can either give us the whole sample or remove the head, but before removing the head, get a fork length and, and a date and what island they caught them from, then we can use the head to remove the otolith and determine what the age was for that length of fish. The work that Humphreys and his colleagues are doing is of great importance to all of us who enjoy fishing, who eat fish, or who worry about the effects of man's activities on ocean resources. By knowing more about how fish grow and reproduce, we can better manage our various fisheries so we can enjoy our local fish forever. Please join us again for another Fish Forever podcast brought to you by the Western Pacific Fishery Management Council.